Chapter 6, Think and Explain. So when a super tanker is brought to a stop, its engines are typically cut off about 25 kilometers from port. Why is it difficult to stop or turn a super tanker? Uh, this is not necessarily a Chapter 6 thing. This could easily be a Chapter 5 thing or Chapter 1. Uh, this deals with the inertia. It's a Super tankers have so much mass that you it does not turn on a dime. And so... Uh, they probably want the answer in terms of momentum, so it has a lot of momentum. In order to stop it, it requires a lot of impulse. Impulse requires a lot of force or a lot of time. And we have a limited amount of force that we can do, uh, especially since it looks like it's coasting to a stop, so they only have friction. Uh, so between the water and the, the hull, it's not necessarily called is that viscosity. I have to go back and look at my engineering terminology. So that's 43. 45, in terms of impulse and momentum, why do air bikes and car reduce the risk of injury and accidents? So you're traveling along the highway. Uh, my mass is about 100 kilograms. Let's say I'm traveling at 60 miles per hour. So that is 6,000 kilogram, that could be kilogram miles per hour. Now, when I stop, I have to take that down to zero. Now, the impulse, so the impulse would be negative. 6,000 units. And when I am, so if I'm going to zero, my impulse is the force times time as well as the change of momentum. So what you want to do is you want to increase the amount of time, which reduces the amount of force that's required. And what the airbag does is it applies a force over a longer period of time, unlike a windshield or a steering wheel, where it's pretty much smack and that's it. Uh, the airbag allows uh, a little bit of a cushion there, which increases the, the time from you know, I uh, have not experienced the windshield, but uh, let's just say a tenth of a second from hitting the windshield to a one second so that you're increasing the amount of time by 10 and therefore the amount of force is decreased by 10. Uh, 48, why would it be dangerous mistake to for a bungee jumper to use steel cables instead of an elastic cord? And again, it's the same type thing. As you're falling, you're reaching a certain speed uh, therefore, a certain momentum, and you want to stop, and you want to increase the amount of time it takes to to stop, therefore decreasing the average force. A steel cable would basically hit its maximum uh, very quickly, and so a lot of force has to be applied in order to stop. And depending upon the, the distance from which you jumped, um, well, you know, let your violent imagination go on that one. 57. Why is it difficult for a firefighter to hold a hose that ejects a large amount of water at high speed? Now, if water is being ejected out, uh, that means there's a force pushing it out, and there therefore must be a force going back the other direction. But from a momentum point of view, if I have a hose that and a dog, that the water is shooting one way. Initially, I had zero momentum, so if water shoots one way, there has to be an impulse coming back. It's basically recoil, uh, if they were talking about a rifle here. And so it's not necessarily a, as tough a thing if the hose is completely straight from the water supply, but it's probably not. So if there's a small, if there's a bend in it, then the water is coming up one side and then shooting out. And so if it's bent, water comes up, shoots out. Uh, so basically, if water shooting out here, you're going to get this kickback on the hose. Number 60, a ball is projected upward from the ground with 10 kilogram meters per second of momentum. What's the momentum of recoil? Well, it's got to be the same. So, because if I'm standing here with a ball and before I throw it up, total momentum is zero in my reference frame. As I throw it up, if it has a certain amount, then there's got to be a kickback. In other words, I push up on the ball, ball pushes down on me, and I push down on the ground. Uh, we don't feel it because the mass of the earth is so huge that the velocity is just minimal. We went through the calculation. I know I've done it with some class. Uh, went through the calculation where the Earth moves, you know, just not even the width of a nucleus of an atom. 61, apple falls from the tree, strikes the ground without bouncing. What becomes of its momentum? Well, basically, as it's falling, the Earth is coming up uh, and they meet each other. And so total momentum zero before, total momentum is zero afterwards. Uh, so the, basically the apple, as the earth comes rushing up, as the earth comes moving up towards the apple, the apple hits it and then they balance again. And so 
the force required to stop the apple is the same force required to stop the earth. And they, that's where it goes. Uh, there's also, you can make an argument that some of the momentum goes into the sound uh, as it hits. And so the total momentum before and after is zero. 65. Explain how a swarm of in flying insects have a net momentum of zero. All right. Uh, I've asked this question before, and I've had a number of students who talk about, well, it has a momentum of zero if they're not flying. Well, it says in the problem that they are flying. A swarm also is you got a whole bunch of them flying around, so they can't really be at rest. However, if I have a swarm of insects all going all over the place, the, each one has its own mass and velocity. Now, if it's a large enough swarm, I'm just as likely to have one of these uh, flying insects going this way as I do have one flying the other direction. And so ultimately, as long as the center of mass doesn't move, then the total momentum is zero. So, because I have just as likely to have one having a momentum in one direction as another direction, and basically they're going to cancel out. Or maybe I have one flying this way, one flying this way, and then one flying uh, this way. And so the three of them cancel out. So statistically, it shouldn't really, the, the total momentum should be zero. Because again, we're dealing with vectors here, and the vectors add, you know, those with opposite directions cancel out. 71, your friend says the law of momentum conservation is violated when a ball rolls down a hill, gains momentum. What do you say? I say your friend is wrong, or I guess it's my friend. So as it's rolling down the hill, uh, recognize that the earth is pulling down on it. It's pulling up on the earth as there's also friction involved. So friction's pulling on, pushing on the ball. Friction's also pushing on the hill and it all balances out. Now, Remember that momentum is conserved in a closed system. So I was treating that as ball and ground. Now, if the friend apparently was looking at just the ball and ignoring the ground, excuse me, and in that case, that would be, if you look at just the ball and ignore the earth completely, that's called an open system because there's uh, an influence that's coming from outside of what you're considering. And therefore, momentum is not conserved in an open system, uh, only in a closed system where you've taken into account all the things that are involved. 77. When you are traveling in your car at a highway speed, the momentum of a bug suddenly is changed as it splatters onto your windshield. Again, with the violence in this chapter. Uh, compared with the change in the momentum of the bug, by how much does the momentum of your car change? It changes by the same amount. But the mass of the bug is so small that you don't notice it. You know, it's like dropping a ball towards the earth. Yes, the earth comes up towards it, but you don't notice it because the mass of the earth is so huge. So bug to, tr uh, bug to car... Yeah, because you apply a force to the bug, bug applies a force to you, to the car. They hit smack for the same amount of time. You don't feel it just because the mass, unless it's a huge, huge bug. Sci-fi kind of bug. Them kind of bug. Them's the name of a movie, by the way. 78. A tennis ball and a bowling ball collide in midair. Does each undergo the same amount of momentum change? Uh, when they say amount of momentum, we're talking magnitude. Yes, they would have the same uh, amount of momentum change magnitude-wise. If we're talking about vectors, one will be positive, one will be negative, or however you want to divide it, there'll be one will be the negative of the other. Uh, that's the whole idea of conservation momentum, that the total before is total afterwards. One loses, one gains. 79, if a Mack truck and a Mini Cooper have a head-on collision, which vehicle experiences the greater force of impact. They exert the same force on each other. This is Newton's third law. Uh, greater impulse will be the same because it's the same magnitude of force, the same time. Uh, I should say greater impulse, greater magnitude of impulse uh, would be the same. Greater change of momentum is the same. If the impulse is the same, the change of momentum is the same. Greater deceleration, this is where they're different. Because the force that's applied is equal to mass times acceleration. They have the same force applied to each other, but the masses are not the same. So the Mack truck, much larger than the Mini Cooper. Uh, so therefore, the Mack truck is, truck is not going to experience it as much. This is similar to the bug and the windshield problem. Same momentum, but the bug experiences greater change, uh, greater acceleration, whether it's positive or negative, uh, greater acceleration uh, than the car will. In this case, the truck or the Mini Cooper will experience a greater 
uh, acceleration than the Mack truck, greater magnitude of acceleration than the Mack truck, because its mass is so much smaller. So just because they exert the same force on each other does not mean that they exert, uh, they have the same impact on each other, the same uh, acceleration from a physics point of view. Uh, in 84, to throw a ball, you exert an impulse on it. Do you exert an impulse to catch the ball at the same speed? Well, yes, you do. Uh, but how much impulse do you exert in comparison? Now, if I take a ball, let's say a one kilogram ball, and I get it up to 10 meters per second. So that's a change of momentum of 20 kilogram meters per second. As it falls, if it's traveling at 20 meters per second, when I catch it, I'm still going to take it from 20 meters per second to zero. So in one case, I put an impulse which gain, gains momentum. The other case, I give an impulse which takes away the momentum of it, but it's the same magnitude. So if it's the same speed, same mass, it's the same magnitude. And that is it for chapter six, think and explain.